And welcome to our November Business Exchange. My name is Karen Myers and I am with the Portage County Business Council. I want to thank Red Shoes for their sponsorship and presentation of this business exchange this morning. Special thanks to Lisa Cruz, our guest speaker. And it's my pleasure to introduce Lisa. She is going to be presenting customer service and social media. Lisa is the president of Red Shoes, named one of the nation's top women in PR by PR News in 2019, and founded Red Shoes in 2008 in Appleton, Wisconsin. She has 25 years of experience in public relations, communications, and marketing. Please help me welcome Lisa Cruz presenting again, customer service and social media. Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. And I would be remiss if I did not introduce um, some additional Red Shoes team members. We have Jackie and Tracy and Kathy on this call as well. I'm super excited. Um, Tracy in particular is going to be chiming in on this presentation. So if you hear another voice, see another person talking, that is Tracy's. She has the black and white striped jacket on. And I'm excited for her input on this presentation because she comes to us from Alta Resources. And this is literally what she has been living and breathing. I think it's for eight years um, at Alta Resources, okay. serving on the social media channels for a number of national, perhaps even international brands Definitely. over there. Yeah. So if you hear Tracy speak up, um, that is who she is and her background as well. I also want to just mention that we always encourage people to ask questions as we're going along. So Karen will be monitoring the chat function, but also we, we encourage you to speak up too. Um, we do not mind being interrupted. This is your hour of time. So get out of it what you want and need. And if there's something that we're not addressing, certainly speak up too. So without further preamble, um, we will start to go into the presentation. Of course, it's not letting me, hold on one second. Karen mentioned um, Red Shoes was started in 2008. My background is in communications, PR, and marketing. Started out in Southern California and then made the move back to Wisconsin in 2001. You might not be aware that I am actually a native of Stevens Point and also went to UWSP, was a graduate of Spash High School. So grew up in Stevens Point and loved every bit of it and it continues to hold a really special place in my heart. So Red Shoes, since our inception, has really focused on strategic communications. So that is the umbrella of what we offer our clients and what we work through. And really, I want to press upon like that art of communications. I understand there's the technical aspects to communications, but there's also an art. And I would, I would venture to say that that's really where we focus on as experts in strategic communications. So I know we're, we're excited to get going into today's presentation. And there's, there's something I just want to point out that you all may be aware of is there's customer service and then there's customer care. So that is just a point of difference I want to point out. Customer service is a part of customer care. Customer service is about that point of perhaps pain for your existing customer. Customer care is about that continuum of care all the way from when they're a prospective customer to when they become a customer. So I just wanted you to be aware of that nuance. So we're gonna just really focus on that customer care continuum throughout this presentation. So it goes without saying that especially now people are relying on technology more than ever. And I would suspect that you're gonna to continue to see due to the current um, situation with online transactions, that you're probably gonna see an, um, an increase in your social sites. So this is really your opportunity to really up your game when it comes to customer care. So, and we're really gonna talk a lot about the engagement of that customer care. So what is social media? customer care. 
So we outlined a few things here. And again, really want to hit upon too, as much as we talk about posting in customer care and social media, we know it's addressing complaints, it's acknowledging positivity, it's answering questions, but it's also engaging your community. So when, when we talk about engaging, I think to a certain degree, we've lost our way a little bit in social media where it seems like it's the norm to continuously be um, in that perspective of pushing out posts, posting content, but we really need to look at the continuum of customer care and how to engage our communities along the way. So this is what we were talking about just now is posting is good, but engaging with your customer is even better. And yes, I would say it takes a, a little bit more in resources and time and energy for that engagement perspective. But if you look at this from the customer care perspective and that customer care continuum, keep thinking about if somebody stops by your social channel and maybe they're not a customer yet, that's your opportunity to start that engagement process and get them to the customer stage. So I think that that engagement process is really, really important. So how can you do it well? You might be asking. So we're going to start to drill down into that a little bit more. And honestly, I will tell you, I don't know if we have the silver bullet to maybe what you're experiencing as far as pain points in customer care. I think a lot of this presentation and what we discussed today is going to be um, things you know, but maybe you need to be reminded of again. So it's like everything else. When it comes to your social customer care, do you have a plan in place? This is really, really important. And I'm not sure organizations are taking the time at this point to put a plan in place. And when I talk about what does that plan exist of, what could it contain, these are some of the questions you should be asking and working through together as a team. And again, I always encourage organizations, it shouldn't just be the social team working in isolation to develop this plan. Look at other uh, avenues or represent, representatives in your organization to provide feedback and input as well when it comes to developing the social customer care plan. So what's your voice? We will go through some um, examples later in this presentation where the, the voice needs to be consistent. And if the voice or the persona is not consistent, that can create brand confusion. So have that dialogue early. What is the voice of your organization? What is the brand persona? What are your messages? A lot of times you might see just because you have a team of social customer care, are you using consistent messaging? Are there key things you should be integrating into your customer care social strategy? Looking at and talking ahead of time, when do you take the conversation online? Everybody might have varying perspectives on that, but that again is a conversation that together as a team you should be talking about beforehand. What are some of the challenges? There's probably some more evergreen challenges you have together as a social customer care team. Talk about those now, or there might be some incoming challenges that need to be addressed as a team before they're being handled online. Looking at what are your opportunities. We talked about the prospective customers. I would say without a doubt, that is one of your opportunities when it comes to social customer care. And then again, talking about who are your prospective customers? Do you really have a deep understanding of who is looking at your brand as a possible um, solution point for the pain that they're experiencing? What are their demographics? What are they looking for? What are they seeking? So again, this is really taking the time together as a team to pull a plan in place. I highly recommend this as a first step. So again, also want to talk about some of the tenets of social media that I think have been lost over the years. So we talk about pushing content out. That wasn't the intent as much as it is today that we see over and over again with brands. 
some of the tenets of social media, like way back in the day when it started to be applied for brands, really depended on these tenets, that authenticity, the timeliness, the engagement, the educate, the education, the listening aspect of social media when it comes to customer care. So I think all too often we see brands that are just pushing out content and moving on to the next thing without taking the time to look at, you know, timeliness. Are you engaging with your customers or prospects? Are you helping educate them? And really, I always put listening at the top of the list in terms of, are you listening to what they are saying? So this is just a little bit of a stat when it comes to if a query comes in on the back end regarding um, care that somebody received, a product that somebody bought, or you have a prospective um, customer. So a vast majority of consumers expect a response from brands on social media. So are you responding in a timely manner? So you can see these expectations are high. So if somebody private messages you, 75% expect a response, 68% expect a response for a public message, and then 73% for public and private messages. So the expectations are high. And I would challenge each of you, are you meeting those expectations? Are you responding to what they're saying? And all too often, I think it's easy to get into the habit of responses are coming in, posts are coming in. And again, we're just thinking about the next post we're going to push out there without taking the time to respond thoughtfully and in a really timely manner. This is your opportunity to win your clients. And not just in the short term, but the long term. So one of the things that we run into is setting expectations. And if you haven't done this, I highly encourage you to do this. Because somebody might be messaging you after hours. Do you have it posted clearly when you're available to help customers? And oftentimes this is just overlooked. And this is just a, a communication misstep. So it's unrealistic to have somebody available 24 seven. So if there are certain hours that you're able to respond, set those expectations with your customers or your prospects clearly on your page. And one of the ways you can do that, if you haven't already, are auto replies, obviously like a gift to all of us to have those set up. And we just used a couple examples here um, in terms of, setting up Facebook business hours and how to go about doing that, making sure that that's clearly posted, and then using auto replies. Again, very, very important. That can help fill the gaps so your social customer care team has some breathing room. Tracy, did you have anything else regarding this slide that you wanted to add just from your previous life? Yeah, I think, the, I think it's important just to make sure that you just remind your customers that you you are people and that you're you're here to help. Um, and these auto replies and this business hours will help to let them know that that you're going to get to it. Um, it I like Lisa had mentioned before worked for very large brands um, and they took this approach too. Um, it I think it sets a very good um, like just perception. Of, of who you are, that, that you care enough to say, we're coming. Um, it, it'll make a big difference. Um, and, and I know we would see this a lot too, because of the technology on the back end, consumers can see that you've looked at a message, they can see that you're, um, that you're on the platform. And so just having these like pieces in place to help you, um, like Lisa mentioned, fill that gap that while you're working really is, is a big, big help. Um, and the next slide then to Lisa is just how to set this up if you don't know. It's super simple, a couple clicks. Um, uh, and happy to help uh, with this as well, but it's, it's a really easy way to just, you know, keep that, set that expectation. And you bring up a really good point, Tracy. I think it's easy for consumers or prospects to forget the human 
factor mm -hmm. of the social customer care team just because everything is taking yeah. place online and that that's that relatability factor exactly and said, this, yep. this message that we had set here was just like we monitor this page right but i've seen messages that are like literally we're real people and we want to make sure we take care of you <laughs> so you know we'll we'll get to this um you know when we work you know eight to five or you know as soon as we can even is totally acceptable i i would say one of the things i think that can be a pain point for customer care teams in terms of being on social is if a question is asked and you literally don't know what the answer is um, so how do you smooth that transition, that interaction with the customer or the prospect? So we listed out in terms of word tracks, responding, like the timeliness of your response is still important because you're acknowledging them, you're acknowledging their question or their comment, but then providing more of a, a call to action, letting them know that you're going to be working on whatever it is that you didn't know at that immediate point what the answer is. So we listed some of the word tracks like this. We're looking into this, great question. We're gonna get right back to you. We're checking with our team to make sure we get you the best answer. So that allows you a little bit of grace of time, but it also more, most importantly is setting the expectation and letting them know you that you're responding to what their concern is. And then along those lines, consumers aren't always looking for a conversation. And I think that this is a really, really good point. So social is a great tool to connect, but try to avoid a bunch of back and forth conversation if you can because that could become very time consuming. And it's, it's a, it seems a little bit opposite of what I was saying before, but you all know time is precious, resources are precious. And sometimes consumers just want an answer to their question or concern, not this full on dialogue going back and forth. That could become um, all consuming. So we just wanna make sure that as much as social is social, that there are some guardrails set up too because as you know conversations could take a life of their own and take up a lot of your time when you have more consumers or prospective customers that you want to reach low effort on the consumer's part that's what i yep. would always coach to what can you do to make sure that your your consumer is getting what they need so it's like answering every point in their message anticipating what they're going to ask next and try to wrap that all up into one one answer it might turn into a back and forth, but don't allow it to become a back and forth if you can help it. So one of the points too we want to make clear is if it's possible, if somebody is reaching out to you on social, keep them on social. So do your best to avoid requesting phone numbers or offering email addresses as, as a resolution. So it's okay to keep it on social, but again, this is the art of communication. So there might be a time where you know you have to take it off social, but here's where I go back to the plan. Have this discussion from the get-go, work through this with your team in that planning phase. If something escalates and it started with social, where is that, that point? where you do have to take it off social. So again, these are questions and things that you should be addressing in your plan together as a team, because you wanna make sure you are serving the brand as a team and you're consistent as much as possible. So we talked a little bit about finding your voice for your brand persona. So you really want to sound as a consistent, cohesive brand. And this is very common in terms of not sounding like a, a certain individuals. We understand individuals make up the team and together you and collectively, you have to sound as a unified brand or voice that represents your organization. So again, I go back to the plan. This should be worked out on the front end when it comes to finding your voice and how do you present united as a brand voice when it comes to representing your organization 
So this can get difficult and challenging, but it's really important that everyone sounds like they're working for the same organization. Because if you don't, again, you're gonna create market confusion and it's just not in line with your brand overall. Tracy, did you have anything to add to this slide? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> So we talk about knowing your voice, finding your voice, and then knowing your voice. So speak in the third person, write like you talk. This one I think seems to be a little bit challenging. Um, again, because we're telling you to be cohesive and, but we also don't want you to sound like Tracy mentioned earlier, like an auto robot or an autobot in your responses. So write like you talk. Again, you're representing that humanness factor and relating to them as humans, bringing it back to the basics, find adjectives to describe your company and values so that as much as possible, work that into your voice and how you're responding. This goes all the way from establishing your brand, understanding your mission, vision, and values. That is a great foundational piece and should flow all the way through into your customer care and how you're representing and talking to your customers and prospects online. If you haven't already figured out what your brand persona looks and sounds like, have the discussion now. As we mentioned, this goes back to that planning phase. And even if you don't have anything written out in a plan, I really, really encourage you to undergo this dialogue with your team just to make sure that there is alignment. What are the characteristics of your brand? What is the tone of the conversations you have online with customers? We see so many different brand personas online. There's some companies that do this really, really well. And there's other companies that it completely falls apart on the customer care experience. So again, you as customer care service representatives really have to understand the characteristics of your brand, the tone of the conversations, how you're responding, the words that you're using. Again, there's so many bad examples, but there's really good examples that of, of companies that are doing it well. So these are just some, use these as inspiration. We put down just some of the, the adjectives that could describe your brand persona. So take a look at these. This is a great starting point of opportunities for you to start pulling out some of these words. How would you describe your brand? Um, I'm, I'm thinking some of these words, if I pull them out right away, I think of a brand, I relate so much from an adjective to a brand because they do a really, really good job of living up to that tone and that brand persona. <clears throat> so this is just an example that we used of some of the adjectives that we use for red shoes. And we just pulled out some of the examples of that. So some of our brand persona are knowledgeable, empowering, creative, engaging. And then that trickles all the way down into how we represent ourselves on social media. So again, going back to that word cloud, you can use that as a starting point. What are the words you would use to describe your brand? And then how can you represent that in your customer care social team? This next slide is kind of going back to what we talked about before keeping it short engagement with consumers should be direct not too lengthy include links to online resources if the platform allows and we use some examples over here and again look at this example i'm not sure if you guys can see my cursor or not but love my target and then target knowing its brand persona, knowing its voice right back at you. Now that might not be appropriate for every brand, but look at how they conversationally responded, the words, yeah, that they use, the exclamation point, that tells me a lot in terms of the type of brand that Target is. And then if you look at the other example, somebody asking about um, a product being discontinued, 
And then someone responding, responding from Listerine, it's still available and you can just feel the energy from that response versus if I just said, it's still available, period. Now, I'm not advocating for the overuse of exclamation points by any means, but again, that gives you a feeling of the Listerine brand, it's energetic, it's helpful, it's educating, it's providing resources and links. So that's a great example of another brand persona. We talk a lot about using your responses as an opportunity to educate not only the person who might have posted on your page, but also those who are reviewing or reading through your page. So keep it, be aware of that, that your responses to the active query are also being viewed by prospective customers as well. So again, you're, you're acting on a stage. So you might think, even though that's a public response, it's just directed to that user, other people are reading that, looking at that, seeing how you engage, you respond in a timely manner, if you're being helpful or not. Um, so just, again, keep that in mind. And that goes back to that customer care continuum of, yes, you're addressing maybe customer service needs, but you also have that opportunity to impress those who are visiting your page. Maybe they haven't done the purchase yet, but the way you interact is setting the stage for a future purchase. So, and then we have showing interest in your customers and striking up a conversation with our consumers to ask questions. Are you asking questions of your consumers? And again, this goes back to, I think we're, we've been doing this so long now, just to freshen it up again. Are you asking questions and then are you listening to their responses? So this is really, really important. It, you never know what kind of response you're gonna get, but it also answers the question of engagement. So, and then we talk about also, it's easy to continuously put resources toward those who have a complaint um, or maybe a more negative post, but don't forget to respond to those who are posting with praise as well. This is really, really important. So you might want to engage with them further, ask another question, but that is such an opportunity for your brand to take advantage of. So don't forget those people who are offering praise, they also need a response and that is an opportunity for your brand and your voice. And I'd like to emphasize response. I think it's really easy to press the like button on things that are nice, um, but like we saw in that target example, right back at you, that's so simple to type. And I think um, it's really exciting for, for consumers and customers to get um, just that, those words back. Um, I would see that a lot, like, oh my gosh, you replied. <laughs> like I didn't expect a response, but you gave me a response and that's really um, fulfilling as a customer. It's acknowledgement that they're, mm -hmm. they're a human with a voice, exactly. And I think to your point, Tracy, too, it is easy to just hit go through um, posts and just hit the like button. It does make more, take more time and effort to literally respond but I think the, the return on that engagement is, is huge. Mm -hmm. So continue um, keeping in touch with your consumer, that will make a lasting impression. So we just wanna talk about this a little bit more. Did the consumer purchase something from you recently? Send a message to follow up. Again, that's closing that loop. I'll tell you firsthand, I am continuously, just about every day, hearing about my son's purchasing experience from when he was a prospect all the way to the actual purchase from Sweetwater. So it's a company, I forget which state it's in, but they sell um, guitars, electric guitars. And he just keeps coming back at me saying, wow, mom, they really get it. Every time they, they follow up with me, they call me, they're responding on social. So it's just this active continuum with him from the prospect perspective all the way to purchase. So again, don't forget about the follow-up. I think it's easy in today's world, as fast paced as it is, to not close that loop. Thank them for their purchase, how they like the product, 
and even take it that step further and requesting that they leave a review on your page. So that is another continuum or piece of that continuum that I think is really, really important. So also following up with consumers. So let's say you did post a response to them with a link, craft a quick message, send it, send it to them and see if the information helped. Again, that shows follow through and speaks well to your organization and your brand in terms of making sure that they're satisfied and also an opportunity, maybe they have more questions that you can respond to. Lisa, we did have a question. Yep. Um, that came through in chat. If you are looking to ask, or if you're looking or asking a question on a general post and you get a lot of responses, would you recommend commenting back to each customer or respond with one general comment back to all and like their comments? I think Crazy, I a, defer to you. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think that's a really good question because you also don't want to flood your threads and your feeds with just thanks, thanks, that, you know, <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> um, yeah. Because that starts to sound um, not genuine either. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you have a good mix of both. Um, vary that reply. You don't want to look like a robot, right? And so if you're going to say thank you back five, ten times, make sure it isn't just thank you every time. Find something, if there's something specific that um, the commenter said, try to pull that out of the conversation and, and say it back. You know, maybe you asked a question about, I don't know, what do you love most about fall? And somebody said something really specific. Grab that specific piece and, and if you're going to reply, make it, I would say in that instance, make it specific to them um, so they feel really heard. Um, and, and just make sure that many responses in one thread are varied. Um, I think the biggest thing is just don't be automated. Um, it, I, in that, it, it would be better to put a bunch of likes than to put a bunch of thank yous um, in that specific instance. Just show that individuality back, if, if that makes sense. Yep, thank you. So in that follow-up phase, um, again, this goes back, I think, to the art of communication. So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to come off as pushy because there is a line where if you're trying to follow up so much that you're kind of like, that can be a turnoff for your prospects or, or consumers or customers. So I don't... I don't know how else to explain it, but it is the art of communication. So I would compare this to you walk into the good old days when we used to walk into, let's say, a clothing store and a clerk approaches you and asks, can I help you with something? First of all, that's great engagement. They're acknowledging you, that you're there. And let's say you're really not in the mood to purchase anything that day, but you just want to walk around the store and peruse. But then that sales clerk comes back five more times. So what are you thinking about at that point? You're thinking, I'm getting the H out of this store. Like this is overdoing it. And I just want to just want to peruse what's available here. So again, that's that art of communications. That's taking in information, reading your customers as much as possible. And I understanding that this is online and social. But again, it's that art of communications and maybe checking yourself a little bit and doing a better job of dialing in and understanding what your consumer or your customer or your prospect is projecting and really listening to what they're asking for. And so you don't want to overdo your follow-up. So just keep that in mind. That goes back to the art of communications. And when I talk about listening to your prospects or consumers, a lot of that is um, look at the tone of their posts, you know, so consider that as well. So you're listening or you're reading what they posted. Is there a certain tone to it? Is it brusque? So let that feed into your follow-up as well. If they, if they respond to you and say, I've got it from here. Thank you so much. That's, that's a pretty good indicator. It's time to move on. So again, we go back to being authentic and talking about those tenets of um, social media, 
You don't want to come off as scripted. I think that that is often the case that we see examples of that in customer care online um, or coming off as skeptical. Like, did you really have that problem with that product? Like that, somebody can sense that and feel that coming across online. So again, just giving really um, thoughtful responses and how you reply. And remember that you're human, you're individuals, and you're relating to other humans on the other side of that social wall. So Tracy, did you wanna talk about these a little bit? Yeah, sure. So these are just some examples of what not to do <laughs> um, and, and why um, they, they didn't turn out so well for, for the organizations. Um, so this first example here is, is an airline. Um, the, the customer lost uh, some, some luggage, right? So not an uncommon problem, um, but the way it was managed was just um, really unhelpful and really uh, impersonal for, for these um, couple of reasons. So the very first message back, you know, they had to start by saying sorry for the delay in responding. Um, so again, this is, goes back to setting those expectations. Um, when are you available? When can consumers ex expect you to be there to help? And I think if you have that set up, you shouldn't have to begin your message with sorry, we weren't here. Um, then. I mean, the consumer does call out, how can you be this huge company and only have a nine to five social? Um, so again, try to try to just set yourself up there for consumers to know what to expect. Um, uh, they gave him an, an excuse of why they can't help him um, in a direct message. And I, I, this is a big thing that when you're crafting your replies, I think just set them up positively. Um, don't lead with what you can't do. Even if you don't know the answer or it's not a good answer. I mean, um, in my previous role, we ran into that question, all, like we ran into questions all the time that we didn't have great news for the consumer, but I, we never started with, sorry. Um, what can you do for them instead? Um, and so in this instance, we can't DM you, can be easily flipped to, hey, we see you're not following us. Can you, can you give us a follow so we can follow up in a direct message? Really simple switch and your tone overall will be so much um, more well received and you'll, you'll just come across so much more credible um, and helpful. Um, and then he came back, I'm already following you, did you even check? So just before you post, remember this is to a lot of people, um, a lot of people can see what's going on. Do we just double check, check, triple check <laughs> your information. And I think that's true of any communication you're putting out, but I think it's, it's easy because we're all on social. We've got it on our phones, we've got it everywhere. It's easy to just shoot those messages back really quickly, especially if you are small and managing it on your own. Um, but just make sure your teams are all in the loop and that everyone's got the same info on hand. And again, Tracy, you bring up a really good point that this, my understanding this wasn't just obviously this wasn't dms going back and forth this is like for public display right, right so any other prospective customers they're seeing this interaction and that's just not a good look and i also i i love the way you um repositioned that third one we can't dm you as you aren't following us and position that in a more positive way because that gets that keeps the the conversation going in a more positive direction in mm -hmm. telling somebody they can't do something for them when it already it started as a negative interaction it wasn't right. helping right don't continue the negativity try to turn it around <laughs> um, here's another one for you to and this is who I was thinking about when it comes to a brand persona yes. uh, I think T-Mobile is very interesting. Uh, yeah, and, and this one overall is interesting. So in my experience in, in care on social, I have never managed a brand that um, takes the individual and lets them be a customer service rep on social. And so um, that's a choice, I guess, that you all can make. For, for me, I 
I view the brands on social as part of the company. So using the we's and the ours. And um, so some, some companies do choose to have Tracy as the representative of T-Mobile. And you'll see that here, they sign off on their, on their messages with their name. Um, but I think this is a great example of why that isn't probably the best choice because you don't have that brand persona and you're letting your, your agents or whoever's managing your social to really just be themselves on social when really they should be following that that brand um so you could read through this on your own but kathy here is a little um a little too personal i, I don't get why this is a problem um what what if this doesn't happen um she literally starts her last message with excuse me um so just make sure that you're taking customer concerns seriously even if to you it is a small problem it's not to them because they came to you and are are letting you know about it that means it's important to them and so treat it that way and 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 don't let the screen between you um allow you to say something that you wouldn't say in person um i think we need to make sure social is social care especially is treated the same way as almost like Lisa's example like is this are you going into a store is somebody coming into your store how would you treat them um, would you say these things to them so don't post it if, if you wouldn't treat somebody who's you know in your brick and mortar building or coming to your organization um, treat it treat it as if they're there So again, just in, um, I think we're winding down a little bit toward the end of this presentation. If, if you walk away from this presentation with some just key messages of some things that maybe you need to recalibrate on when it comes to customer care and social, is looking at your authenticity, the timeliness of your responses. Like, I always think the timeliness of your responses is so important. Like. If a customer already approached you with a dissatisfaction or a complaint, and now you're not being timely in your response to them, it's like you're taking a bad situation and you're actually now making it worse. And I don't think that that's anyone's intention. Like your intention is to take a bad situation and make it better. Turn that person into a brand advocate for your organization. So in doing that, you can do that through engagement and that education component, educating your consumers, your prospects on how or what your product does or your service does, and then really being active when it comes to listening. How can you, can you take a step back? Like if for one day, let's say you just focused on listening even better, and, and what are your prospects and consumers saying to you? Just you really, if you're, if you're not doing a, a good job of active listening now, just take the time to recalibrate in that regard. The listening is so important. And there, those comments are right there. Like you have opportunity all over on social when it comes to listening and figuring out how could you make the situation better or you're responding to them. So there's a lot of opportunity there. So I wanted to make sure we have a few minutes for questions, um, and we certainly open that open that up. So we always tell people um, there aren't any bad questions or dumb questions, that sort of thing. This is your hour of learning. So what can we help you with? Are there things right now that you're like, ugh, we should address this or talk about this, like it's really painful for our organization? And again, if you want to do it via um, the video or chat, we're open to either. So there is already one question in the chat um, from Crowley. She says, it might be a bit off topic, but how do you handle businesses on Instagram constantly reaching out to collaborate? Yeah, that's a good one. I think there's, that's probably experienced by a lot of people. Um, I still would say reply um, and just reply nice. Um, you know, we're not looking to collaborate right now or thanks for looking at our page. Um, it, 
it's just not the right time for us or some, just something nice and, and polite to say, say no, thank you. Um, I know those can get kind of spammy, um, but <clears throat> uh, without going too deep into somebody's profile to figure out who they are, I, I would just recommend a quick no thanks response. And is that more a question um, about the volume of responses or more of the messaging, how to, I'm assuming it's the messaging of how to respond, it sounds like. If not, just let us know. Yeah, and I had to laugh at um, Eva from the university responded um, to, <laughs> there's a page that keeps asking to co-host Friday night football games on the university's <laughs> page. And you know what, if the same customer keeps coming back and you've done that polite no thank you or you've addressed their concern, like you don't want to straight ignore somebody, right? That's not great service either. But if your message to them is consistently the same message, like at some point you can cut it off. Um, and that's really a, a choice you'll have to, to make. Um, you know, is it the right time or <laughs> is it... Um, is it okay to, to, to just let this one go? Um, you know, you can only do so much, especially if, if the answer is no, we're not interested. I do also find that if you are addressing the same person consistently, it's okay to offer up yourself as the person to reach out next. So it's okay to say, you know, thanks so much for checking out our page. We're not looking to collaborate right now, but if that changes in the future, we'll reach out to you. Yes, that way it kind of ends the, you know, constant. Bump, yeah, that's if you will. a great point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll follow up when we have an opportunity to work with you or if we do. Yeah, agree. We have a question from um, Sam. Um, what are your thoughts on sharing business posts to your personal page and on the personal page feedback is received? Karen, ask, ask that question again. You kind of went out on one part of that question. I'm sorry. What are your thoughts on sharing business posts to your personal page and on the personal page feedback is received? Share, I think I'm understanding this right. So you share a post and then maybe a question or a comment about the business comes in on your personal page. If I'm understanding that right, have you tried? Okay, correct. <laughs> it came through in chat. Um, have you tried then using the business page to go through and, and respond on the personal page? I, I think that's how I would manage it. Um, and if it is a concern or something that you would like to shift to your business page, I think that's perfectly okay. Um, I have a social team that cannot access it. Okay. <laughs> this sounds thought, technical. I know. My thought, it, it is a little technical from that perspective, but my thought was going to be, this would be a perfect opportunity to be the business on the page and say, come to us in a, in a direct message or, you know, come, 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 come to where we are. Um, if your team cannot access it, though, I'd have to think about that. But the person who posted it could, would, if the, if the business can't access that personal, the person could re, still redirect them to as mm -hmm. a option B back to the business. Right. Good option is to tag your company back in through your comments. So if it is on your personal page, you know, and maybe you're not sure how to respond or you want your social team to handle those kinds of comments or questions or concerns, um, a really great way is to just, you know, say, oh, well, I'll have the team get back to you and then you can tag the team so that they can you can tag the company right in the comment so that then they your customer doesn't have to work hard then to get back to the company page they can just click in the comment mm -hmm. and then that will redirect them or you you could be more than welcome to say oh well the organization does have a live chat you know here is the link to get to that and then you're just taking one step out for them to do but you're also not carrying the burden of having to yeah. respond on your personal page. And potentially, depending on your privacy settings, even just that tag in your comment would open up that thread to 
allow them to, you know, see, see that comment and pull, pull the consumer over. Are there other questions for us? One more just came in chat. How do you handle a situation if a social team member gave out the wrong or mostly wrong info in a reply? What's the best way to correct this? I've seen that happen. <laughs> um, and it's unfortunate for sure. I think the best thing is just the transparency, the honesty. Um, if it's public, just address it. You want the right information out there. Um, and, and depending on how, how bad it is, I, you can potentially remove the reply and just start over, but I don't even advocate for that all the time because it goes back to your humans, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but if you can just build something that says, so sorry, we wanna follow up, um, what we sent to you earlier isn't perfectly correct. Here, here's the info we want you to see and, and have, and, and we're sorry for this mistake. If it affects the consumer in any way, um, and that something went wrong for them personally, that's your opportunity to go above and beyond. And what can you do for them? What can you give them? What can you do to make them um, remember a good experience and not the misinformation or that misstep? Any other questions? What is your advice on removing comments that are mean, aggressive, or overly nasty? Get rid Ooh, of that's them. A, that's a great <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, get rid of them. I, I think some people hesitate to hide and remove comments, and I don't think that should be the case. If you haven't already done this, I think your about section in, on your pages should have some sort of rules or, or community guidelines, um, because then you kind of got a backup when you remove them if, if somebody were to come back and get, get mad that they don't see their comment. But remember that what consumers post um, is also a, it's a reflection of, of your brand and your organization too. So you don't want it to be filled with mess um, and, and, and nasty things. Um, don't get overly hide happy either though. Um, I would say extreme negatives can go, um, but things that are just complaints you should address and try to manage with the consumer before just hiding. And you bring up a really good point of community guidelines. Um, we find that again and again with organizations that they do not have community guidelines in place. And community guidelines are, to me, it's a, it's a safety net. It sets the tone for the interaction that you would like to take place on your social channels. And without that, you really don't have a, a recourse. You know, um, So if you do not have community guidelines in place, highly, highly recommend, um, you can just do a Google search if you're looking for examples of community guidelines, should certainly be out there. Um, when it comes to blocking nastiness, I'll tell you over the years, um, I think Tracy's right. I don't, I don't think you're going to go crazy with hiding and blocking and that sort of thing, but it is an available option and we have done it. Um, there is just no happiness for some people to be had and it, that might be your best recourse. I don't think, I don't think we get on there and we say, okay, we're just going to block them. But um, without further conversation and review, I mean, there's, there's, thoughtfulness behind that, but it is an option and you should not be afraid to use it. There's just some people you're not going to make happy. And if they're, if they're not playing by the community guideline rules, then that is, that's your safety net. Any other questions for us? And I think Karen will also um, provide the presentation to you and your team as well. So it, you'll have access to that, correct? Yes, Lisa, thanks. Yep, we'll post it on our social media. It looks like there is a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, one is, what about when a customer who misunderstands a comment by one of your team gets mad and demands to know her name? We stated multiple times that she misread her tone she was being so nice. 
Tracy, I'm Bonus sure you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Again, this goes back to the persona and trying to really make sure your messages messaging is consistent. Um, I think in this case, first of all, let's not share names of people behind the social um, channel if possible. But I think this is a good understanding to potentially move move off of social. Um, if if you need to say to this person, you know, we want to we want to talk to you. We want to make this right. Call them. Um, I think people are they tend to be more willing to be mean <laughs> through social um, than they would be if you picked up the phone and show them that you're a human, that you're apologizing, that this is it's not what we intended, um, and that that's okay. I think just remember that customer service while this is focused on social is still a whole thing it's a whole a whole big circle so you know if you what would you do if they were standing right in front of you you know you'd have a conversation and and that is difficult to do sometimes on social um and so just take it offline if necessary um and if that doesn't work if if, if you don't want to do that or if it's then that might even just be a place where you you stop um, sometimes going too deep will just make consumers more upset. Um, and you gotta be careful of that type of engagement too. You don't want things to be shared or go viral. So, um, you gotta watch that, that angle too. Ask her to call. Hey, I'm wondering, do you have a sample of rules and community guidelines for the about us section? I think we could come up with one. I think we have some posted for some of our clients we could share. Um, and again, it, um, I know in the past too, like you can Google um, some community guidelines just if you're looking for some more education, but yeah, we can share some that we have on our clients pages. Thanks, Lisa and Kelly, I'll make sure I get that over to you. Okay, a um, couple more. Back on the previous conversation, wonderful advice. So Tracy, Lisa, uh, the first thing we did once the customer got mad was ask her to call us or allow us to call her. We finally just had to ignore the thread since she would not stop. We did not share the name. So I'm, I'm glad you agree, thanks. <laughs> you did it right. <laughs> That's exactly how I would have handled it. All right, and one more question. Do you have any advice for people with home-based businesses that use their personal pages to communicate? Hmm. Does this mean like you are using you versus building a business page? Yes, okay build a business page. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's where I would go. Um, it's, and it's really easy to share content as you from your business. Um, but I think you're going to reach a bigger audience if you can build out that, that page for yourself. And, um, and also you'll be able to post more. I think you'll be able to get and reach more people who are going to, um, want to see that content as much as you probably, um, think your friends and family maybe want to constantly see that business update. Maybe they don't want to see it as constantly as somebody who really intentionally wants to follow your business. Um, that's what I would do. And then just share the content. I would also say that as a liability standpoint, it's almost always better to keep your business separate from your personal, just so that, you know, people might associate you with your brand, but you don't necessarily want any issues that you might have with your business to be associated with your personal life. So keeping those separate um, from a liability standpoint is almost always the best option. I 100% I agree. I know that um, way back in the day, there were a lot of questions in regards to this business, personal, can I just use personal for business? I wholeheartedly agree, keep them separated. It just gives you a degree of separation overall. And so you put a good point in the comments. Analytics are better with your business page. You can see how many people did your post reach. Are you even touching people that you want to? Um, and you can really start to, to drill down your messaging. 
um, you don't have to put ad dollars behind it to, to figure that some of that stuff out with, with a business page, which is nice. But in the same regard, if you do want to put ad dollars behind it, it, you can do that from the business page. Yes. Yeah. Well, Good question. Everyone for attending our business exchange. Lisa, Jackie, Tracy, thank you for your expertise and for sharing with, with us this morning. We appreciate it. Everyone, next business exchange is scheduled for December 9th, so watch your emails for more information on that program to come. Have a great day. Lisa, any final remarks? No, just holler with anything. We always have an open door. Um, we will send you the presentation and we always appreciate what the Portage County Business Council is doing. We continue to be so impressed. So keep up the great work. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. You too.